Herbert, uh, a cult leader. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do even with a young child. There's a great website called criticalthinking.org. Mm -hmm. Criticalthinking.org. Um, I also want to mention Philip Zimbardo, who's my mentor, and this is so incredible, he's president of the American Psychological Association. He did a, a um, uh, Psych 101 course online for free. You could literally take a college level psychology course. It's at learner.org, L-E-A-R-N-E-R.org. -E the, the title of the show is Discovering Psychology. And there's a segment called Constructing Social Realities. And I'm in it, it talks about cults. And it, show, it, it also shows another experiment where a teacher divides kids between the blue-eyed kids and the brown-eyed kids. And it's, it's a, it, you want to do little pieces, sow seeds, but most of all, be loving. Be loving. Yes? I didn't want to, I don't want to have a, a myopic view here, but uh, living here in the valley, uh, Salt Lake City, uh, <coughs> The LDS Church, I don't know whether you're aware of this or not, is would sit about in the middle of the Fortune 500 as far as their financial wealth. Uh, they also, there's such a concentrated group here of Mormons. I wonder if there's any parallels uh, with Mormonism, with Mormonism, because a lot of these cults are very isolated, whereas Mormonism, uh, they control a major university, Brigham Young University from which, of course, they admit all their, their information and their doctrine. And often when I talk to uh, Mormons, I say, well, you go to the little section in the library published by BYU, but I prefer the other five stories and the, right. the other 90% of the library in, in researching my arguments. Uh, I'm just wondering if uh, there are any parallels that you've seen. Well, Moon has an accredited university, the University of, of um, Connecticut at Bridgeport, and the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, you know, the gig giggling yogi, that the $3,000 can teach you how to levitate, walk through walls, become invisible. And if you believe that, I have a bridge, I'll give you a bridge But they have a, an accredited university in Fairfield, Iowa. Um, so there's a lot of cults. I, I'm not aware of any, any you know, major group that has politicians in Washington who are fully first. Um, I, I, you know, when I first got invited, I was like, you want me to come to Salt Lake City? And, you know, why are you having this meeting in Salt Lake City? Like, are we going to be safe? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, other questions? Yeah, um, I'm just dying when you ask this question. So many of us that have left are the only person in our families that have left, that has somehow just, I mean, all by ourselves, gone and studied and found out, not learned from anybody else, but just what makes the difference between a person that will do that and the people that never want, even want to, or, you know, I, I just don't get that. Um, Is I, there some I don't have an answer. Really? Except that your your soul or your spirit or your personality. I thought it was pain too. But your, I, I wanted, your what? Well, I, I I always thought it was pain because I had pain? a lot of pain. Pain is a big motivator. Sent me there, but I wondered. I just I don't know. Uh, I don't have I don't have an answer for what makes one person you know do what in, in an environment like that. Except that I can tell you. If you, if you see the Ash Conformity study and you see people looking in the space of an hour at lines that are two inch lines and saying they're three inch lines just because everyone else in the room is saying it, it, it shows you the power of our species that we want to adapt and we want to conform. It's something very deep in our nature. But once you learn that, that, that that's, a tech, you know, that's a feature, I can guarantee you, if you're ever in a room and somebody's trying to tell you a two-inch line is a three-inch line, you're going to say, no, it's not. And if they insist that it is, you're going to get up and you're going to measure the sucker. You're crazy, you know, because you learn from your 
experience. Um, Michelle, do you have a mic? No, right here. Oh, really no, we I need we need you to just take a turn because oh. sorry, oh, we'll we'll come back to you in just a second. Sir, am I supposed to walk? Yeah, I was kind no, of uh, I'll bring it to wondering. You, you know, one of the things that always always puzzles me is at what point do we cross the line for a person you know, in approaching uh, when somebody's trying to influence us. Uh, you know, I'm kind of looking at like well, right now we're in the middle of a big political season, obviously, and you see the whole gamut of people from people who are just, oh, okay, this is, you know, this candidate might be good, that candidate might be good, all the way up to people who are, I guess, fringe wackos, if you will, right? Uh, who, would, who would go out practically and kill a candidate if they didn't think they were the right person for the job or something like this. Great, so. And it, it just reminds me, it seems like we, we human beings can transition from and sometimes it's not very difficult, it isn't very difficult sometimes for a person to transition from somebody who's just on, you know, just looking at a situation, gets drawn in, gets drawn in, and they just keep going further and further and further until they become a radical. That's what we know from social psychology, that the situation, because we are sensory based, and we're taking in information from our environment, it influences us. And it can influence us in a very constructive way and empower us and give us new tools to think and ways to dial into our feelings or it can depersonalize us and make us feel fearful or guilty or or you know look to someone to think for us and such. So I, I acknowledge that. By the way, um, uh, Zimbardo has a book called The Lucifer Effect, which Ken mentioned. It's an excellent book. And, and Zim did a, uh, a video, uh, I mean, he did a talk at Harvard Law School, and it's on video on the web, where he goes through some of the themes. So for those of you who don't want to read the book, you can uh, do a search for the Lucifer effect, uh, plus Harvard Law School, and he quotes, and you'll find the video for that. Other questions? Yes. Um, my uh, daughter, a while back, I didn't know that. I, I think it was because I'd ordered a, an iced coffee, and she was upset about that, and I said, well, she kind of joked me, the word of wisdom says hot drinks is <laughs> And she told me she prayed the whole night after that to, to reestablish her testimony. She said, Mom, I can't talk to you anymore about these things because I like having someone telling me how to live my life. And I think it is a lot of personality. And so with my children, what I have tried to do is just do the critical, is just pose questions. And I don't know what else to do because they are with their father so much that I, I don't know what else to do besides just say, well, this is what I see. You know, kind of give them, try to give them a balanced right. picture. Right. Is that enough? Is that going to be enough? You know? I, well, I mean, I, I believe that there's an infinite number of things that people can do, especially if you have contact with your loved ones. So, I mean, uh, but I definitely am one that says prepare and then do things and not just, you know, shoot from the hip and, and do shotgun kinds of things. And I, and I outline in the strategic interaction approach a very goal-oriented, pragmatic model that has people thinking, where am I now? You know, what, what is my goal? And, and, I, and I urge my clients to think in terms of helping the loved one. The goal is to empower the person to think for themselves and make their own decisions. The goal isn't to get them out of any particular group. And if it is, you're setting yourself up for a control battle and a win-lose battle. And then you're going to lose. Um, or usually you're going to lose. But if you set it up as, I love you, I'm learning, I'm growing, I just want to understand, help me to understand, and you have a questioning kind of approach, think, what are the steps I need to take? And what I tell my clients is the first step is always rapport and trust building. It's always rapport and trust building. People want to go for the home run and do the knockout punch, but if they don't have rapport and trust, they've got to make the time to, to, to do the nice things, to, 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 to help them with their homework. To, you know, to teach them math or to, to share things that are of interest to them, to do the things that they like to do. And, and, and just by osmosis, by hanging out with them, they're going to have some positive influences, I can assure you. And then after rapport and trust building, 
I, I talk about gathering information, but again, it's information about getting inside how that person thinks.